engineers, even as they prepare for job markets either with the US or elsewhere. Tuk is one of the three universities in sub-Saharan Africa that offers bachelors of aeronautical engineering. And of course, that's some good news for the young people in different institutions of learning in the country. And getting back to that conversation around banking, and the banking report that was released by Cyton had a significant focus on Sharia-compliant banking. In the same vein, Nairobi is hosting a two-day summit from today to explore how Kenya and the region can best tap into the lucrative global 230 trillion shilling halal Islamic economy. Local, regional and international industry experts are expected to converge in the city for the East African Islamic Economy Summit now in its second year. Participants will dissect the opportunities presented by the multi-trillion shilling niche halal market regionally and globally and how best Kenyans can and other East African countries exploit it to boost their economies. And I want now to bring in a lady who will be talking to us about this, and that is Agnes Kitao, a partner at GBS Africa. She will be getting to tell us more about Islamic banking, what it means for the sector, and what opportunities does it offer for Kenya, now that you're seeing a lot of push to have more financial inclusion in the country. Many thanks, Agnes. Thank you, Ben. So looking at uh, this particular conference that is scheduled to start today, what are some of the key areas of focus that uh, most of the participants will be engaging in? Um, we, we're going to be looking at three, three areas. We'll look at Islamic banking, uh, which has already seen some movements in Kenya and East Africa. Yeah. We're also going to look, um, this year we widened the program to cover Islamic economy. So we'll look at halal tourism, knowing that East Africa is one of the I think leading a tourism destination, you sure. know, looking how can we diversify the tourism sector. Mm -hmm. Traditionally, we've always looked at the Western, Western economies for our tourists, but looking how we can build infrastructure within the tourism sector to attract um, the, halal, the halal market. Mm -hmm. We're also going to look at the halal economy, you know, right. halal meat, halal food, sure. fashion. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, we have great content pre prepared for the next two days, and, and I'm very delighted that Nairobi is once again a host for this forum. Awesome. And um, this particular forum comes at a time when we're seeing the government is trying to um, come up with the policies that will be able to see Islamic banking get a front seat in terms of financial products in the market. Um, we did see there's a desire by the government to raise money using the Sukuk bonds and uh, also tapping into the Islamic finance. Perhaps will this also feature in the conversation? Yes, only what we'll be looking, you know about uh, Kenya's looking to borrow more money to finance our infrastructure projects sure. and also finance the budget. Mm -hmm. We've had this conversation about a Sukuk bond and when the, the, it came to our market, everybody was like, what is Sukuk? Yeah. So the government, as you say, they've done some, some, we've seen some movements in regards to policy and, and regulatory framework. We're going to be hearing from uh, the Ministry of Finance, mm -hmm. uh, Capital, Markets, Ma Capital Markets Authority, who are charged with mm -hmm. developing the regulatory framework to, mm -hmm. towards issuing the, the Sukuk bond. All right. And um, looking at these uh, developments around the Sukuk, um, there's that need for more financial uh, access in the market. Where do we head as a country when it comes to um, enticing people to believe more in the Islamic financial sector, which holds a lot of potential? You know, one of the most important things that we need to do is to debunk the myth um, debunk the myth around Islamic finance mm -hmm. because a lot of people think that Islamic finance is only so they they relate it to the to the religion mm -hmm. it has completely nothing to do with, with with the religion as you know it's just surely a compliant their money do, they don't invest in say gambling or alcohol or you know pro, Sharia mm -hmm. compliant, um, mm -hmm. they only invest in Sharia compliant uh, sectors. So it's an opportunity for Kenya to diversify its market. We need to borrow more money. And mm -hmm. I know it's a big conversation at the moment in Kenya about our uh, national debt. Yeah. Uh, but we've seen some uncertainty in the global markets. You know, with the Brexit in, in, in the UK, sure. the, the militants policies we're seeing from the US gov government. So Kenya must look mm -hmm. for alternative sources of financing. Mm -hmm. And I think that the, the Middle East and the GCC economies mm -hmm. 
provide a great opportunity for Kenya for, in terms of investment. All right. And um, moving on to this particular um, Islamic uh, conference, there's also concern around these illicit financial flows that makes its way through the Islamic system. That is the perception that uh, majority of people have. Perhaps how true is this or is it just a fallacy? I think it's a fallacy. And, and, and as I said earlier, Ben, uh, the most important thing and what we are trying to achieve at, at this forum is mm -hmm. really to debunk the myth about the whole Islamic finance and what it entails and that it's only for a select community that's the Muslim religion. Yeah. So just like conventional banking, mm -hmm. risk management and, and, mm -hmm. and ensuring that we we, we adhere to the laws yeah. in, in Islamic finance, it's very important. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a fallacy. They talk about not, not having mm -hmm. clear regulations to ensure that there is, an, there is, uh, there is no illicit flows of, of finances. All right. Yes. Uh -huh. And um, as we wrap up the conversation, why should people take part in this uh, conference and um, who are you targeting really? We are looking at both governments and, and the private sector and we have brought in experts on Islamic finance, you know, some of the institutions of all like um, the Dubai Islamic Bank, uh, financial institution from Qatar, Saudi Arabia. And I want to give an example of the fact that uh, the UK, despite it being a non-Muslim community, issued mm -hmm. a bond in 2014 They raised $500 million. South Africa has been overly successful in their Islamic economy. Mm -hmm. So Kenya, Kenya's vision 2030 is mm -hmm. to be a financial hub for Africa. So. I think by tapping into the Islamic economy, mm -hmm. it moves us towards achieving that vision of becoming a financial hub for Sub-Saharan Africa. Mm -hmm. And um, of course, um, this is quite uh, um, timely because uh, also over and above that, um, we're seeing the conversation around financial inclusion in Africa is taking center stage where African governments are trying to get products that can resonate with a mass or a mass uh, should i say population we did see kenya doing the emma kiba we, um, it has received some interesting responses perhaps um, in terms of tailoring products for the market where do you see the financial sector moving towards remember a lot of our population not only in kenya but within the sub-saharan africa are largely unbanked so Islamic finance provides that for financial inclusion. Some people may shy away from conventional banking because of, of the fact that it's not, it's not compliant with Sharia, Sharia laws. So Islamic finance comes at a time when Kenya is innovating, mm -hmm. financial institutions are innovating. We're going to see a lot of conversation on fintech within the Islamic finance. Right. Um, and, and, I, and I believe it comes at a time, I know you're aware that we have a big business delegation from Qatar mm -hmm. um, coming into the country from today. And I think it comes, it's, it's a sign that Kenya and, and the rest of Africa need to stop looking at just the West, but mm -hmm. there are neighbors in GCC and the Middle East who sure. offers grand opportunities for, for this region. All right. And um, I can't let you go without asking you, looking at the halal economy, we're talking about close to 240 trillion shillings its size. and. Uh, We've seen a lot of interest now that Kenya being one of the frontier markets in the region, there's a lot of um, um, foreign investors looking to come in, of course, mainly coming through the likes of uh, Dubai, Qatar, um, having a significant interest in Kenya's economy. And from a processing part of it, where there's the halal economy, where you're talking about meat products, how critical is this for opening up or unlocking the potential? We completely need to, an overhaul of our sector, and I'm delighted that the Minister of Tourism will be speaking tomorrow at the conference, really telling us we are building an infrastructure. You know, we'll be delighted to see the Ministry of, of Trade to see how can we build an infrastructure to attract this. And maybe before I go, I want to say some of the experts who are coming, uh, who are coming for this conference have already sampled our destination, looking at our tourism part, product. So they mm -hmm. went on safari, just, and I think they'll be giving us a feedback on some areas where we need to do in regards to, 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 attract, to attracting uh, this, the Qataris and, and the Middle East clients. All right. And um, of course, women have had a pivotal role in Islamic banking. Um, what are the trends you're seeing, especially women now having an interest in financial uh, access? You know, the, the whole world, we're all innovating. And I, and I think that we've seen a great narrative on empowering women and making sure that women access finance. And, and I think Islamic finance is one of, I mean, and, and 
developing it in this market, I think opens up an opportunity to ensure that our women, both uh, conventional who, who do conventional banking, yeah. are able to access finance through Islamic finance. All right. Many thanks, Agnes. Looking forward to getting to hear some of the insights that will be shared at the conference. Absolutely. You're most welcome. Many thanks.